we started working in Africa even before the independences. So our commitment has been long-standing. And uh, for all of these years, those years, we've supported the development of Africa in different ways. Uh, first through developing the intellectual uh, capacity in the continent through a program we called Backing Brains uh, that uh, produced over 500 PhD graduates uh, on the continent and uh, that are serving the continent almost in government, in civil society, in research, in private sector. I hardly travel or go to conferences uh, on the continent when I don't meet someone who introduces himself or herself as a Rocky Doc, a doctor supported by the Rockefeller Foundation. But besides the human capital, it's also been institution building uh, through uh, particularly the agricultural sector. So building the capacity uh, for research, uh, but also for providing the technical um, accompaniment uh, that smallholder farmers need, but governments need. And this has been done through many institutions, such as the Institute of Agriculture, Tropical Agriculture in Ibadan, or the CGIR centers, or more recently at the turn of the century, the Alliance for a Green Revolution of Afri in Africa, bringing the success of the Green Revolution that was realized earlier in the 50s in Latin America and later in Asia, bringing it here to Africa. Over 30% of everything that is produced is lost due to inefficiencies. Yet we're not having uh, yield gains that reach 30%. So that means that everything that we gain on one hand from those investments is lost on the other end as long as that we don't manage the value chain uh, from end to end. And this is why concretely the Rockefeller Foundation has made a commitment of uh, $130 million uh, last year uh, to start a program um, that is called YieldWise, which brings private sector, uh, policy makers, uh, farmers themselves, institutions like AGRA and the like um, to partner to address this big problem. And uh, more recently this year, uh, we also recommitted ourselves uh, to supporting countries and governments actually be the own agents of the transformation of their agriculture through the Partnership for Inclusive Agricultural Transformation in Africa, where we are joined by USAID and uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and, and Accra. When we talk technology, we usually think big things, big innovations, but sometimes it's simple technology that can make a huge difference. Um, within YieldWise, we've looked at 290 new innovations that do not get to, to the farmers. And we analyze them looking at which ones have the highest ROI and are the most accessible to farmers. And we realize that uh, simple technologies such as hermetic storage, like triple layer bags, uh, whether they are bags, whether they are cocoons or silos, metallic silos, can make a big difference in terms of uh, preserving uh, the yields uh, in terms of grains. Um, keeping them up to 12 months or more uh, with the right level of humidity reduces uh, not only the loss uh, by over 90%, but also stops the, the proliferation um, of uh, diseases and bugs and all of that. So improving also the quality and the price value of that grain. Uh, when we look at, for instance, fruits and vegetables, simple technologies such as heavy molded plastic crates uh, play a big role 
and reduce its mechanical damage during transportation uh, by over 80%. Uh, you know, so, and, and on and on. So we see so many little technologies that are very affordable, between one to three dollars, that can make a huge difference. So we need to actually create more awareness uh, around those technologies. Uh, create networks of uh, distribution uh, so that they are available. Perhaps bundle them with other circuits of distribution of agricultural inputs, whether these are seeds, whether these are fertilizers or other type of things that uh, farmers procure. But technology is critical and it needs to get to the hands of the farmers and we need actually to create that awareness but also put in place the networks that allow them to be accessible. The model that uh, Yieldwise is promoting is sustaining of four components. One is uh, market access, the second is farmer aggregation and training uh, so that they can not only meet quantity requirements of the markets, but quality requirements of the market. The third one is uh, technology, which I just talked about. And the fourth one, critical in addressing your question, is the issue of access to financing. And we know that in the agricultural sector, production and processing, and taking to marketing, uh, women constitute about 80% of the, of the labor force. So, the issue is definitely working with governments to create the right types of regulations. But what Yieldwise is doing with its partners and uh, uh, and uh, the uh, financing component is really working with financial institutions themselves uh, to show them the opportunity or the missed opportunity uh, by not. Uh, uh, proactively including smallholder farmers and specifically women smallholder farmers into, uh, uh, into their uh, lending. So we work with different uh, partners just by making sure that uh, women have access to, to market, uh, by having access to technology, uh, give them the possibility to be seen as more credible Source, uh, sources of produce uh, by buyers and by that increases their ability uh, not just to take loan but also to repay. And the other thing is also working with the institutions um, uh, and others by putting technologies that allow uh, to uh, not just identify these women, their plots, their activities but also their risk profile and uh, putting that at, in the hands of the institutions and working with them to design the right and appropriate financial instruments that actually can support these women in their trade. So we've done um, with our partners a lot of that, working with uh, many financial institutions in West Africa, in East Africa, putting also lines of uh, guarantee schemes in the institutions and segregating, saying that this is supposed to guarantee loans to women through those new uh, financial instruments. So uh, there is a lot that is being done. There is still a long road to be traveled um, in that direction, but I think that through those kinds of innovation and uh, educating the financial sector about the opportunities will uh, make them see uh, the opportunity and actually really work towards the inclusion, the financial inclusion of all smallholder farmers, but particularly women who represent the bulk of them.